Oh, oh, welcome to the Bonus Point Podcast. No, I don't have an itch. I'm rubbing this balloon on my head to try to get the electrons from the atoms in my hair onto the balloon. You see, all matter is made up of atoms, and atoms consist of protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons in the nucleus of an atom has have positive charges, but then the electrons have a negative charge. Now, apparently, the uh, electrons have rested upon the balloon and caused the balloon to be negatively charged while my hair is positively charged, and so they're attracted. That's the law of electric charges, which we'll learn about today on the Bonus Point Podcast. The Bonus Point Podcast. You see, if I can cause a balloon to have a uh, negative electric charge, then the balloon, at least this side of the balloon, will exert an electric field. And that force will pull on the positively charged hairs. And you can probably see that the hairs are separating from one another. Oh, I heard a, an electric discharge there. I don't know if you heard that. There's some popping and crackling going on. And that is an electric discharge. Sometimes the electrons will actually jump from one place to another. Now, the hairs are separated from one another because they each have a positive charge, and so they repel one another. The law of electric charges says that like charges repel and opposite charges attract. So let's mark this balloon so we don't forget. I'm going to take a regular old marker here. The Bonus Point Podcast brought to you by Sharpie Markers, the greatest markers in this classroom. Uh, let's see. This is covered with electrons, so we will mark it with a... Oh, look, there's one of my hairs stuck to it. I don't know if you can see that. But anyway, we'll put a negative sign on it because this is negatively charged. We can make that even bigger if you like. Okay. Negatively charged balloon. And so we'll have some positively charged things that we can attract. What's something else? I have some salt here. We'll pour some salt out. Let's see if we can... Ah, salt. The Bonus Point Podcast brought to you by salt. Ah, good salt. Now let's see if we can take this negatively charged balloon, charge it up a little bit more here, and see what happens with the salt. Wow. It's almost like a salt vacuum cleaner. can make the salt dance. So the salt has a positive charge. The balloon has a negative charge. They're attracted to each other. See, there's salt all over the balloon. Maybe you can see that. Uh, we can also do this with little pieces of paper. Here's a... Uh, I'm making quite a mess here, but that's okay. Science is messy. Ooh. Some people say these uh, papers from the hole punch are not worth anything, but... We'll use them for science today. A lot of them are stuck together. Kind of separate those a little bit. Now we have salt and paper. Great combination. Let's see if we can get these to attract the balloon. Let me charge it up. My super powered negatively charged balloon here. And let's see if we can... Oh yeah. The dancing paper pieces. So they're positively charged. The balloon is negatively charged. Well, charges are changing here. Some of them are actually repelling. Some of them are not. And some of them are sticking to the balloon because apparently they had a positive charge. And so they're attracted. This is all due to the law of electric charges, which is like charges repel and opposite charges attract. It's a lot of fun, as you can see. I'm having fun. But we can move on to something else now. If you want to see this again... Just rewind the podcast. Now this balloon sticks to my head because of static electricity. But static doesn't mean sticky electricity. Static means that the electricity is still. It's not moving. It's, it's not uh, part of electric current. Okay? Now there are electrons on this balloon. You can't see them. They're really tiny. Even tinier than those grains of salt. But if you could see them, you would see them 
on the outside of this balloon, which makes it negatively charged. And they're not going anywhere because the balloon is an insulator. It doesn't let electrons travel through it very easily at all. Now, if the balloon were metal, that would make it a conductor. The electrons would travel through it, and they wouldn't be sitting there. And this would not stick to my head so well, or my chin, or my shirt. Anyway, this wouldn't stick very well. Static electricity means the charges are standing still. They're staying still. They're not part of a current and not moving anywhere. And so the balloon remains negatively charged, at least for a little while, while my head is hopefully staying positive. Yeah, could turn negative if this keeps up. We'll keep going. Okay, I'm all wired up. We talked about conductors and insulators a while ago. Ever seen one of these things? It is a conductor. Well, it's a wire. This is a plug that you would plug into a wall socket. And you can see that it has metal prongs on the end of it. And those metal prongs are good conductors of electricity. That means that the metal allows electric charges to flow through it very easily. But as you can see, it's wrapped in an insulator. Uh, this looks like plastic, white plastic or something. And that protects us from receiving a shock if we were to touch this while it was plugged into the wall socket. There would be 120 volts flowing through this thing if it were plugged into the wall. So you might not want to touch it. So the insulator helps keep us safe and it also keeps the appliance running smoothly. An insulator is a material in which charges cannot easily move. Uh, plastic, rubber, glass, wood, those are all good insulators. And most metals are good conductors. So keep that in mind as you're studying electricity. This is a battery. You've probably seen this before. You'll notice that it has two electrodes on the top. I guess this is the top. This is a 9 volt battery and it has a positive electrode called an anode and a negative electrode called a cathode. Now a battery has one side that is negative which has extra electrons, one side that is positive that has uh, well not as many electrons and uh, the electrons from the negative end they try to go to the positive end okay so if you connect them with the wire, then they'll be able to do that. Uh, there are a lot of different kinds of batteries. Here's, here's a battery. Uh, this is a AA battery, and it's only 1.5 volts. Now, the voltage is the potential difference between the anode and the cathode, the two electrodes. Now, you don't necessarily have to know that today. But what you would probably be interested in knowing is there are a lot of different kinds of batteries, and you can even make your own. All you need is something with an electrolyte, like a lemon. Lemon has citric acid in it, which can work as an electrolyte. Now, what an electrolyte does uh, is it causes electrons to gather on one electrode, and it strips electro, uh, electrons off the other electrode. So here we have a lemon with a zinc-coated screw pushed in one side, and then a copper penny or a copper coated penny pushed in the other part. And right now the acid is working as an electrolyte to cause electrons to collect on the screw and it's causing electrons to be stripped off of the penny. And so basically what we have is a positively charged penny and a negatively charged screw. And so if we connect those together we can have a little bit of voltage. Now what I have today is a voltmeter, which will measure the amount. Oh, this is my calculator. That's not a voltmeter. Here's a voltmeter. Okay, and we're going to turn that on. This is direct current, so we turn on a DC. Here's our battery. I'll turn this so you can see it. Hopefully you can see that okay. There we go. And I'm going to check the voltage here. The copper is our positive. We'll put the red on there. And the zinc is our other side, so we'll check it out. It looks like we're getting some voltage there. Okay. Well, it's not quite one volt, but almost half a volt. And that's not too bad for a little lemon. Now, we can 
connect the lemons together and get even more volts. And I'm sure you could have a lot of fun doing that. There are different kinds of batteries. The reason I brought this calculator is I wanted to show you something you've probably seen before, that it runs off of a photocell. A photocell uh, takes energy from light and it converts it to electrical energy. And so as you can see, you can put different numbers on this, but if I cover up the photocell, cover up the light source, um, well, it's, it's still working. But I guess it has a battery backup. That, that's great, isn't it? Unless you're trying to do a podcast where you're uh, teaching people. Anyway, uh, keep studying about batteries. Batteries are made up of cells. You know, if you have a cell phone, that uh, works using this potential difference and the voltage. And you need to understand that. See, in science, energy is defined as the ability to do work. And energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be converted into other types of energy. And a cell is a device that produces an electric current by converting chemical energy into electrical energy. And a battery is c composed of many cells. Well, I hope that uh, this was helpful to you today in your study of electricity. I've certainly enjoyed my time with you and the balloons and the lemons. And I think I'll leave it at that today. Hope you have a good afternoon and a great time studying sinus. This is the Bonus Point Band, signing off. Point Podcast.